have got Dr. Osborne on the phone, on hold, waiting patiently. Um, again, Dr. Osborne is the clinical director of Town Center Wellness in Sugarland, Texas. He's a doctor of chiropractic medicine and a board-certified clinical nutritionist. He has held faculty teaching positions at Texas Women's University and HCC's nursing program teaching neurophysiology, nutrition, biology, and anatomy and physiology. He lectures nationally to doctors on the topics of gluten sensitivity and tolerance, uh, and intolerance, celiac disease, and many other nutritionally related topics. He's also the executive secretary for the American Clinical Board of Nutrition. Yikes. Dr. Osborne, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thanks for, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. I, uh, I, I, I mention it seems like every week, but I love getting people on that, that it takes me five minutes to run through their resume. Uh, well, yeah, we, we, try to, um, we try to stay abreast of all the latest and greatest in the, in the scientific evidence and field, especially when it comes to gluten. Uh, even with my own history, I'm gluten intolerant myself, so uh, that's actually what prompted my, my kind of experience into this whole realm uh, under my umbrella of nutrition. Oh, interesting. And how long ago were you you diagnosed, or how long ago do you when did you find that out? It's been about six years now. Great. And uh, I didn't actually have a whole lot of symptoms when I, I initially found out. I had a kind of a light chronic cough that completely went away, and I had um, I had a lot of water weight loss. I lost about twenty five pounds of water and visceral fat. I, you know, I would have thought I was in relatively good shape, um, but I had some patients that. Um, that uh, some of their symptoms had kind of prompted me to look at, at myself a little bit closer. And so after after looking into it a little bit closer, I was one of those what you call silent cases. And who knows when it would have blossomed into something much more serious. So I'm glad I was able to catch it early and it really just transformed my life and, and, uh, and allowed me to be much more aware of the incidents that, that, that had and how it impacted people in the U.S. Right, right. Well, that's why I... I yeah, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that you were gluten intolerant. I like it. Um, and, you know, it's funny. I, I, When I was diagnosed myself, I lost about the same. I was about 25, 30 pounds. And when I see people now, they're, they're just like, oh, man, are you all right? You know, because I, I dropped so much weight. But I feel really good. And I swear all the weight I dropped, like you said, was weight that I could have, you know, I could stand to lose. You know, it was fat. It was, it was unhealthy weight, I think. Um, so, real quick, is there anything that I missed on your on your resume? In your uh, background? No, nothing so much on my background. You you hit it pretty much right on the head. I, w I would say the only thing that um, that you may be missing is we we've, we've since started a uh, a glutenfreesociety.org website um, that we we launched it because of our patients uh, in our clinic. It's very difficult for me to have enough time to get them educated about gluten sensitivity once they're diagnosed. And uh, I try to give every patient at least a good hour of education, but then I, I saw that, that we were lacking in the ability to get them educated, so we created glutenfreesociety.org. And uh, there are about eight hours worth of video tutorials online that we've created as an educational resource for those. And um, it's actually a membership, so when people go go there, there, there's a cost associated with getting online, but a good portion of the proceeds were actually going to be taken back to gluten-free and gluten intolerance research. There's a lot of questions out there that have been unanswered, and we really we see a lack in funding and a lack of ability um, for other doctors to be able to even go and try to do the research uh, because it's mainly nutritionally oriented. There's not a lot of um, drug company funding for it, so... We're just trying to give back in that way. At the same time, we educate the world. Wonderful, wonderful. And I, I, and I, I did check out that site this morning. There's, a, there's, there's quite a bit of information on there. What does it cost for someone if they go to that site and they want to, they want to be a member? Um, it costs twelve ninety nine a month, twelve dollars and ninety nine cents a month. They can sign up and they can quit any time they want to. Uh, there's a registration fee to sign up initially at sixty nine dollars. And anybody who's listening today, if they type in the promo code Osborne, O-S-B-O-R-N-E, uh, will waive that registration fee and they can get instant access. Well, perfect. Perfect. All right, and that was glutenfreesociety.org. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Um, 
Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, we've got about 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so with you, and uh, I've got about 3,000 questions here. So I want to, I'm gonna jump right into it if that's all right. That's perfectly fine. Let's go. Um, and the, the, I'm gonna start off with a with a seemingly simple question, um, but it may not be as simple. Uh, if you can just take a minute to explain, for especially for the, those that are newly diagnosed that are listening, what is gluten sensitivity? How is it related to celiac disease? That's a great question. Um, the way I like to explain it is simply this. Gluten sensitivity, otherwise known as, or sometimes oftentimes referred to also as gluten intolerance, is a basic state of being. In essence, it's no more a disease than a peanut allergy. It's no more a disease than a, than a, you know, a strawberry allergy or a shellfish allergy. The, the problem is that it doesn't react in patients that have the problem. They don't react t t typically acutely. In other words, they don't have severe onset of symptoms. Some do, but most don't. The celiac disease is caused by gluten intolerance. So we could make the statement that everybody with celiac disease is gluten intolerant, but we cannot make this statement everybody with gluten intolerance has celiac disease. There's a distinct difference. In other words, gluten intolerance causes celiac disease but it's also been linked to about 190 other medical conditions. That's not to say it's the only cause for these other medical conditions, but we know it to be a contributing factor. Okay, interesting. And you, you're right, because you hear those, and they're, they, they're used, you know, um, interchangeably, almost, it seems like, all the time. And so I know a lot of people get confused, you know, with all those different terms and things. Well, it's a, it's a very strongly emerging field of research, and so what, what's happened in the past is that everybody's been so focused on celiac disease, and, and you know, not for ungood cause. I mean, we want to focus on the disease, and we want to focus on how to better treat it, certainly. But in the, in the medical literature, we've had two new medical terms come out in the last 10 years. One of them is non-celiac gluten sensitivity, and the other is gluten syndrome, and both terms were really designed to differentiate gluten sensitivity from celiac disease. I mean, we could say that, that celiac disease is just one of the many faces that gluten intolerance presents as. Well, then wouldn't you, I mean, couldn't, couldn't you say that the reality is, I mean, just the real simple to the point is thing is that it doesn't really matter because the, the, um, the treatment is the same regardless of That's which one of, of those, type, you know, which one of those um, labels you have? It, you're absolutely right. It doesn't matter because, you know, there's a saying in medicine, if the test doesn't necessitate, necessitate a change in treatment, then don't do it. So if you, like if somebody who's listening to this and they think they may be gluten intolerant and they've done their own test where they went off of gluten and they felt infinitely better, do they really need the confirmation of the biopsy? 